Well, boys, looks like the XRP arm is at it again. Yesterday, we had Bitcoin dipping down below $53,000. And it looks like the reasoning was because this cuck right here, the Ripple co-founder and executive chairman, Chris Larson, just endorsed Kamala Harris for president. He's going against all of the investors in his project. And you can probably blame this cuck for the crash that we saw yesterday. All jokes aside though, and speaking of FAGs, the FAG index is now at 23, which is extreme fear and the most fear that we've seen since about last month, I guess. Maybe this is an indication that we're finally reaching the phase of capitulation before we can actually form a solid floor here and continue to the upside. Whenever we can continue to the upside, it does look like we're going to be breaking out of this broadening wedge pattern, and it is probably going to have a price target of about $93,000 depending on where we do break out of it. But for now, it looks like we could continue back down to the bottom of this range, and it could take us as low as about $43,000, which is coincidentally the electrical cost at the bottom of the production cost for Bitcoin. That has traditionally acted as a really solid floor, and I don't think we're probably going to be breaking down below that significantly, or at least closing any real candles below it. We could wick down as we have in the past, like in the March 2020 crash, but it's probably going to act as a solid buying opportunity and the last opportunity to stock up on your favorite crypto projects before we actually do hit the parabolic phase of this bull market and Bitcoin hopefully goes soaring above $100,000. With the price of Bitcoin being at about $54,000 though, it does look like it could shed another $10,000 before the bottom of this trading pattern is actually formed and we continue to the upside again but we don't necessarily have to go down there so if you haven't sold already well i wouldn't go selling into the dip like this because it's probably closer to a great buying opportunity than a great selling opportunity but it does actually look still slightly hopeful that we're putting in a higher low here and we can actually see this as the bottom before continuing up again and I wouldn't actually be all that surprised, honestly, because the dumpiest day of the week is usually on a Friday. And then whenever the markets reopen again on Monday, those big institutions see the buying opportunity and they take advantage of that. So we see a little bit of a rebound. In my opinion, that is probably what's going to happen as we start out the next week. But only time is going to tell if that's going to be the higher low that we're looking for and if it is going to actually be the floor signaling a continuation to the upside. It looks like most of the reason for the sell-off was actually because these NARM farm payrolls came in lower than expectations and much higher than the previous of 89k, but none of this really matters in the long term because in the short term it might have a, sh a little bit of a shock reaction in the market like we saw on Friday, but as we also saw last week, these numbers are just fudged and they're totally cooking the books, so these numbers are probably going to be drastically revised lower to the downside. And we've been in a recession for some time now, so I'm pretty sure that the Fed is still going to have to do those rate cuts. In my opinion, they're actually probably going to have to do them much more drastically than they're anticipating because we are headed for a financial crisis. We've been in a recession for some time now, but the data is indicating that something really big is actually on the way, which is why I think they say we're not in a recession because they're saving that term so that they don't have to actually upgrade the crisis to a depression. It's not just crypto, but the S&P 500 is also showing some cracks, and it looks like it's possibly even put in a double top here, which could definitely take it significantly lower, and if it breaks down below this 200-day moving average and actually forms a lower low, then I think this could be just the beginning of the sell-off and the beginning of the impending economic crisis that I've been talking about for several months now. Luckily for cryptocurrency, according to this article on Cointelegraph, it looks like Donald Trump is doubling down on his vows to make the U.S. the world capital of cryptocurrency, and it looks like he might have plans to appoint Elon Musk to a position that could oversee some aspects of cryptocurrency, and this could be a boon for the whole crypto market. Obviously, this is all just speculation right now, and nothing is obviously going to come to fruition until at least the election happens. But as you know, in cryptocurrency, it's usually the rumors that actually cause the price action. And then whenever the news comes around to pass, then people settle their bets and take a little bit of profits off of the table whenever their predictions actually do turn out to come true. So if we continue to see good news like this, then we might continue up until the election. 
but I'm certainly going to be cautious around that time because it could turn out to be another buy the rumor and sell the news situation, leading to a sell-off drastically after the election comes to pass. In other positive news, according to this other article on Cointelegraph, MasterCard has just enabled their non-custodial crypto spending in a new partnership, and while this isn't the most exciting news, honestly, it is a step in the right direction as it causes competition to continue ramping up, and we're going to see the competitors to MasterCard like Visa and basically the rest of the financial institutions trying to follow suit, and I'm sure they're going to be adopting cryptocurrency technology in their own ways to try to keep up. For once, I actually do believe what JP Morgan and the likes of Jamie Dimon are saying, as according to this article on Coindesk, it looks like the crypto market lacks major near-term catalysts, according to JP Morgan. I still don't know how JP Morgan is saying all of this stuff since he's been dead for some time, and obviously this is somebody who works at JP Morgan, probably a higher up, maybe even Jamie Dimon. And usually I would say that you want to watch what they're doing and not listen to what they're saying, but I've actually been saying this one for a while now, and I think that right now, with it being an attention game, unfortunately attention is just everywhere else, and there's not any significant catalysts that seem to be coming up in the near term for the crypto market. Maybe they do know something that we don't, and they're maybe trying to just push a couple more people out of the market, and with them saying this, it might actually mean that there is a catalyst coming up that no one else is seeing. But until we do see some really significant positive price action catalyst, I think we could continue to consolidate here sideways and down into this pattern. And as I said in my last video, we are still looking for some kind of catalyst that can actually send us breaking out. I don't say this very often, but I think they're actually correct over there at JP Morgan. And right now, I'm just not seeing any real catalysts on the horizon, at least not any closer than a few months out like the election. Well, that's not exactly true. We do have the federal funds rate that's supposed to actually start dropping in the next meeting. And with that meeting coming up here in the next month, that could definitely turn out to be a catalyst that'll send us to the upside. But as you can see, whenever the Fed funds rate goes down, that usually is directly preceding a recession or some kind of economic crisis, which is indicated by these gray bars. Also, we've seen the 210 yield curve uninverting for the very first time since back in June 22, and usually this too is another data point that precedes the official announcement or the kicking off of the financial crisis that makes them admit we're in a recession. It usually does take a few months though, so the panic might actually not set in here for a few more months, but I would say that this is definitely an indication that something big is on the way, because every single time this thing uninverts, we see a significant recession, and there's nothing here to indicate to me that this time is any different. So you guys let me know in the comments, what do you guys think? Are we headed for an economic crisis, and do we have a continuation of the bull market as we lead into that situation? Or is this just going to be a nothing burger, and all of the lowering of interest rates is just going to inject liquidity back into the system, sending us parabolic on the biggest bull market of all time? Either way, thank you guys so much for watching, and don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button if I brought you value. But most importantly, don't forget to do only good every day, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.